video lecture for unit two. This is the unit where we're specifically looking at working in ICT and what working in ICT uh, looks like for someone like you that's being trained up, ready to go into a career in this industry. At the start of each of these lectures, I'll uh, remind you of the HC outcomes we're working towards for this unit. There are three outcomes that we need to look at and then the syllabus is broken into seven key headings. We're going to be looking at uh, heading number one, the nature of the industry at, um, at the moment. And I've broken that into two sections because there's quite a lot of information to include here. And I don't want you to rush through it. I want you to spend some time really uh, taking in that information and responding to the questions we've put up for you. So to get started, when we're talking about the nature of the industry, some of the things we're going to look at are things like the service areas that people work in, standard hardware, standard software. Um, in our next le lecture, we'll look at emerging technologies, converging technologies and career pathways, as well as how you maintain what's called industry currency. But I suppose we should get started by looking at what the industry, the ICT industry, looks like for the future. So you should have already seen this video before. If you haven't, I encourage you to go and watch it. I've shared the link with you. It's an Edpuzzle link. This will take you to a website where you'll watch the video and there's some notes and some questions to answer along the way related to this video. A bit of a summary, this is what Microsoft thinks the future of technology and the IT industry is going to look like. And the key points that are going to be made uh, through this video is this thing called data integrations which is how technologies are linked together or integrated together so that they share data. This is why uh, when we're at school, we're able to sign in to almost everything that you need to use at school using your CENet account. That's a single sign-in feature. And because we have single sign-in, we've integrated a whole heap of different applications using that same data source. Okay, so we have things like your Google Classroom, your Gmail, your Google Docs, your Google Drive links to this CENet account. We've got your um, Edpuzzle account linked to this CENet account. You've got the library resources such as Oliver linked into your CENet account. Okay? All of these things linked in using a data integration. The future of the IT industry looks a little different to what you might have experienced in the past. And when we look at the IT industry as a bit of an overview, we can see that around about 45 or 50% of the people that are IT workers work in an IT company. Okay? Now, in Australia, if you're looking at the data you've got on your screen there, we're looking at that's like 309,000 companies. Okay? Sorry, 309,000 workers working in uh, companies. Okay? The rest of this graph, so the dark, the dark blue, uh, the dark green, the light green, and, and sort of the bluey gray color, are all of those other industries that are not IT industries, but still include IT workers. Now, for example, if we look over here, we've got financial services. So I'm just going to get my pointer out. If you've got financial services over here, this is companies like accountants, for example. They have IT workers working in their companies. It's not an IT company, it's an accounting company, but they have IT workers there. We've got public administration, so government. The government is its own industry, but we have IT workers that work inside of the government. I'm thinking like the tax office, for example, where someone needs to design their websites and someone needs to maintain their data security and someone needs to make sure that they have single sign-on with MyGov. So we've got around about 46,000 people that work in the public industries and government organizations as IT technicians. There's these other industries, so these are other areas, um, all of the really smaller industries that exist out there. Um, this might be things like hairdressers and, and all of the really small companies you don't normally think of that might have an IT worker working for them. So Just Cuts, for example, is a hairdressing company working in the uh, hair and beauty industry, but they would have an IT team running their website and running their uh, point of sale equipment, their registers and their databases of uh, customer details at a head office level. So these are, these are the other industries. And then you've got your sort of professional services, things like education fit in here, okay? things like your, um, your typical just everyday business. Okay? 
Architects, for example, is a professional service and they would probably have one or two IT people working in their companies or contracted to their company to help run their IT systems. So you can see when we talk about IT workers, realistically, if you're looking at your future as an IT worker, 45% of you will work in an IT company like Microsoft, Apple or Google. The rest of you will work in all of these other what we call diverse industries still as IT workers, but working in these other companies. So if I'm going to split this into two main categories, we're going to call this category one, IT workplaces. Category two, diverse industries or diverse workplaces that use ICT technologies. On the left, your ICT workplaces are really clear and really obvious to you. When I say, oh, you know, I work for an IT company, you might say, oh, what company do I work for? If I said Microsoft, Apple, Google, you'd straight away know that these are IT companies. They are companies that sell products or sell services specific to ICT. So it could be that they sell uh, internet, it could be that they sell hardware, it could be that they sell software, it could be that they sell a service. Something that they sell is IT related. On the flip side, these diverse industries, these are the industries that are not IT. Okay, I'm going to keep reiterating this. These are the industries that are not IT. I'm talking schools, for example. We are not IT companies. But we rely very heavily on ICT. And if we think about right now, in this online learning space, we're relying on Apple hardware to provide us with the ability to provide you with education in a remote learning setting. So this is how diverse industries are using ICT. Now to help that happen, we have to buy Apple products, we buy Google products, we buy Microsoft products, and we use these products in our education to provide our service of educating students. Likewise, government, business, finance, and all these other industries do the same thing. Now in your notes in your book, you should have a heading at the moment saying general features of IT. You should have it split into two, one, for, one section for IT workplaces, maybe you'd present this as a table, IT workplaces and one for diverse industries, and you need to list some examples of companies. So in your IT workplaces, I've got some examples there, Microsoft, Apple, Google. Matrix IT is a company you're going to become familiar with. We use them for our work placements at school. So when you eventually go out into um, Matrix IT's company, you go there and you see what it's like to work as an ICT worker in an ICT workplace. Educom is another example I've got there. This is the company that our school uses to get laptops repaired. So if a student or a staff member has a broken laptop, we send it to Educom IT. They do the hardware repairs, they send it back. Okay, so these are some examples of ICT workplaces and you could probably add plenty of your own as well. ICT industry companies. On the flip side, on the other side where you've got your diverse industries, I've given some generic names like education. I want you to be really specific and give me an example of an education company that uses ICT. And your obvious example there would be Clancy Catholic College. I want you to provide a government example of a government agency that uses ICT. So it could be New South Wales Health are using ICT for their app to let people know about coronavirus updates. Businesses that use ICT, pick a business that you're aware of, one that's not an IT company, any business at all. Could be, uh, I know some of you work at Woolworths, for example, so Woolworths are a business, they use ICT. So there's your example there. So write these examples down in your notes. So now let's look at what your career options look like looking into the future. Now, this is a, this is a chart that's been produced by the Australian government. And it shows you some historical data. So this white section here on the left of the chart shows you real statistics on how many hundreds of thousands of people are employed in those different roles in IT. Then in the blue section over to the right is where the employment projection is. This is where the government thinks the industry is going. Now, we're sort of halfway through this projected point and there's probably been some changes because of this whole remote learning and remote working option. So there might have been some changes recently, short term. But the generic uh, thought process here is that the number of jobs in IT are not going to increase in the future. They're going to stay pretty much where they are at the moment. 
And what that means is we're going to see less of the old school IT. So these, these yellow ones you see here, you can see there's a, been a massive decline since the year 2000. Now the year 2000 wasn't all that long ago, that's 20 years. There's, there's been a pretty significant, significant decline where half of those people no longer have jobs. These are the keyboard operators. These are the people that are just sitting at computers, typing things for IT companies, entering information into a database. The reason these jobs are declining is because in those other companies like education, business, and finance, you don't need to be an IT worker anymore to enter data into a database. Pretty much anyone can do it now because most people are able to use a computer. Back in the year 2000, we had one laptop in my house and one desktop computer. Whereas if I looked at my family now in the year 2020, if I was still living at home with my parents, we would have one, two, three, four, five, six laptops for six people, plus there are three iPads, plus there are six smartphones, plus there would be a desktop computer, and that's not including some of the other technologies that we would have around the place. So anyone can now use a computer, which means these keyboard operator jobs have sort of declined fairly significantly. These are not the jobs that your course is preparing you for. So don't stress about that. We are not preparing you to be a keyboard operator. We are in fact preparing you to be ICT support technicians and ICT support and test engineers. These are the two main jobs that we're preparing you for, the orange and the blues. You can see the orange has had a slight increase over the last couple of years. This is mostly because Everyone is able to produce apps now, but no one knows how to maintain them, look after them, and test that they're working on multiple platforms and keeping them up to date. So they need ICT technicians and test engineers for this sort of work. Additionally, because more people are using computers and there are more networks and more system integrations and data integrations that exist and everyone relies on computers, there is a higher need than ever before to have ICT support technicians to help when things go wrong. So if we're looking at you know, where the job prospects are at the moment, an ICT support technician is where the jobs are going to be into the future. You can see that's the area of growth. The last area, database and systems administrators and ICT security specialists has been fairly steady, but my personal thought is we're gonna see a fairly big increase in ICT security specialists. When we start talking about Microsoft's future vision that we watched that video for earlier, and we talk about these data integrations and linking data between all these different systems, there's got to be security behind that to prevent people's personal data from being hacked or being released online. So if we know that there's going to be an increase in data integrations, then we should expect that there needs to be an increase in data security and ICT security specialists as well. Okay, So that's, that's my... Um, my thoughts that if you're looking at a career prospect in IT, you should be looking towards ICT support technicians and something to do with data security or data integrations as an area of specialization. So this brings me into service areas in ICT. If we think about what IT used to look like, ICT used to look like people that would plug in networks and cable computers together and they'd go in and they'd code the back end of the network and and enable port forwarding and all of those sorts of things. That still exists, but as the technology develops, we're working away from needing those really technical skills in coding for networking, and we're working towards systems now that are graphical, drag and drop systems. Over the holidays at school, we are implementing a new network um, for all of our buildings, which mean that Instead of needing someone to code any changes to our networks, our IT technicians at our head office level, at our office in Leichhardt, will be able to just click on any computer on the network and change its access levels very quickly using drag and drop templates. Literally clicking and saying, this person is a principal, drag the principal settings onto Mr. Fetterplace's computer, and that opens up all of the access that he needs as a, as a principal. And then they can drag ordinary everyday teacher, that template, onto my account and that limits the amount of things that I have access to. So we're gonna see a lot more dragging and dropping and graphical stuff in the networking space. And so we're gonna be moving away from the traditional networking technicians. 
A lot of the hardware for networking uh, these days is done by electricians anyway. They run a lot of the cables and fit those cables off. And it's really only the software side of networking that IT uh, people are doing mostly these days. Next, um, when we talk about hardware, so we've seen historically computers were really expensive. Um, when our first computer was purchased when I was um, quite young, if we think back to 1997, my family got our first computer. That computer cost around about $8,000 and it had 16 megabytes of memory. Megabytes. You currently on your computer probably have 500 gigabytes. Okay? And your computer probably only cost $1,500. Okay? So the hardware costs have significantly changed um, and we can, we can thank mass production processes for that. But because the cost of buying new hardware is so cheap, there's less of a need for hardware repair technicians anymore because quite often it's cheaper to buy a new computer than all of the effort spent on repairing hardware. Okay? This is particularly the case if, if your whole logic board dies or your whole screen dies. It's quite often cheaper just to buy a new, new device. When we talk about software technicians, and we're talking about what software technicians used to look like. We used to be looking at people writing software and really deep coding involved in that at a, at a C plus level, computer language. Now we're seeing that people can create apps on graphical programs like Adobe XD that work fairly well. So there's still, some, there's still the need for the sophisticated computer level coding, but a lot of really basic stuff there's, there's no need for that anymore. So we're going to see a shift away from these sorts of roles, sorry, and we're going to see an increase towards these emerging technologies. Web development, again, used to be very heavily reliant on coding. We now have graphical programs like Wix where you can just drag and drop elements of a website. Google, uh, Google Sites, for example, is very easy to create a website now. You, you do not need to know any HTML at all. Things that will stay, and we've already said increase, things like support, your technicians that help people when things go wrong with their computers, that's still going to exist. So don't think that historically means that they're disappearing. They're not disappearing. They're just the traditional versions of what an IT person would do. The emerging ones are these ones over here where we're talking about keeping our data safe and integrating our data in multiple systems so you only need to sign in once. Okay, so... That's, that's sort of what we look at in terms of the service areas coming up in ICT. We also need to be aware of some really basic products and services that are standard across the industry. Things that everyone should know about if you are an IT worker and things that everyone should be able to do some basic troubleshooting for if you're an IT worker. And the main areas we talk about here are hardware and software. In hardware, you need to know that there are laptops, you need to know that there are monitors, desktop computers, you need to know about AV equipment like speakers, projectors, maybe Chromecast, Apple TVs, all those sorts of things. You need to know about them and be able to do some basic troubleshooting if you want to work in the IT industry. You also need to know about basic software, what we call standard software that everyone is familiar with. It would be expected if you work in IT that you know about Windows and Mac operating systems. It's expected that you know about Safari, Google Chrome and Microsoft Edge, okay, what used to be Internet Explorer, and how those softwares work and how to troubleshoot some basic issues around them. It would be expected that you know about word processing software, spreadsheet software and web authoring software. Things like Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, Google Docs, Google Sheets, Gmail and Outlook for sending your emails. Um, even in the iWork um, software from Apple, we talk about things like pages, numbers, and Keynote. Okay? These really standard bits of software that everyone universally should be able to use. You as the IT person, not only need to be able to use it, but you need to be able to do some basic troubleshooting. Some of the more technical things um, that an IT person would be expected to be able to do, a service that they might provide, security, data integrations, technical support, building infrastructures, 
remote access, so your ability to connect to someone else's computer remotely and provide them with support, networking and some basic websites. This is the expectation of an IT worker. So if you walk around telling people that I'm an IT worker, you should expect people are going to ask you questions about these sorts of things. So that's the end of that's the end of today's slides. I hope that's been really informative for you. I want you to go back through this video, write some really good notes and answer the questions that we've posted for you up on the Canvas platform. Thanks.